So today I want to talk about the Navigator Send Beacon method. Now this has got a very specific purpose. If you've ever had a web page where when the person clicks on a link, when your user clicks a link to go somewhere else, whether it's leaving your website or going to a different page in your website, if you want to record that data, if you want to take some information from the current state of your web app and send that to the server to be recorded, well, you can add listeners for the unload event or the um, before unload event. If you add the listeners to that, you can trigger some JavaScript to run, but that JavaScript is not allowed to use fetch or XML HTTP request. What happens is the browser takes a look at the fact that it's leaving this page and says, I don't have time to do fetch or XML HTTP request. So your request gets rejected. But with send beacon, we can actually do the call. We can send data. Now we're not going to get a response back and that's okay. It's not for getting a response. If you want a response, you have to do it before the person tries to navigate away from the page. So I've got some code here. I've got a little back end. It's just one single page. This is the whole page right here. I've got an express server running on this port number. I've got an array called data. And what I'm going to do is every time there's a request that comes in for this URL, I am going to, or this endpoint, I'm going to take the current date, add it to this array. I'm going to write that out. I'm going to see how many total requests there are. So how many times that we've been doing. Now I could put this in a database or do something else with it. What I'm doing here doesn't matter as much as the fact that I'm actually going to be making calls to this URL. So I have this server up and running. Here is my send beacon page. So there's a little bit of CSS, just setting the font. Inside the body, we've got a paragraph with one anchor tag that's taking me to other.html, other.html. That's it. There's no content. It doesn't really matter where we're going. It's just the fact that we are leaving this page to go somewhere else. Now I've added an unload event listener to the window object. So that means anytime I click on the link to go to other.html, this code is going to be triggered. I'm going to write out the event and I'm going to call my fetch function. Now I'm using the actual fetch method here. I could have used the XML HTTP request method. It wouldn't make a difference, but I am trying to make a call. I'm trying to send something to this right here, this endpoint. And I'm going to try to put something inside of local storage when this gets back. So this is not going to work. I'm not going to be able to actually send the request to here. I'm not going to get a response. I'm not going to be sending anything in local storage. So let's test this version out right now. Here, I click on the link and there it is. You can see here that the status of the call to analytics, that endpoint was canceled and it was canceled because the browser unloaded the page. It said, I'm not going to run any script that's going to take some amount of time that I have to wait for the result for. So it cancels it. Now send beacon, which is supported everywhere except for old version 11 and less IE, but, and edge version 13, everything else supports it. We've had support for years for this send beacon method. But like I said, it's got that very specific use case. So there we go. We'll clear that out again. I'm back on the send beacon page. Here we're going to edit this. I no longer want to call the fetch version. I'm going to create a new version of the function where I'm going to use the send beacon method. URL is the same as it was for fetch. And I'm just arbitrarily putting together some data. Now it is important to note here that when you're doing fetch, I can specify if I want to use get or post or put or patch or delete, whatever method that I want. With this, with the beacon, the send beacon, this is always going to be post. So always post. And part of that is the fact that we're sending data along with this. Now the data that we put into there can be an array buffer, array buffer view, a blob. Uh, blob has some cores issues with it, so you have to make sure that you're sending it to the right domain and have everything set up. Uh, DOM string, form data, or URL search params. A DOM string, 
like what I'm doing here, or form data is probably the most likely for what you're going to be using. So how do I call it? Simply just navigator.sendbeacon. That's the method. And we put in our URL. And then what's the data that we want to send up? That's it. We're going to call this method. And I'll just write this out just so I have something up in the console that shows that this method was called. And that's it. We're calling this beacon version instead of the fetch version. You can see here when the unload event happens or before unload. That's another option here. There is an event called before unload that you can use. Doesn't really matter which one. The fetch is always going to fail. The beacon will work. So let's clear this out again. Refresh, make sure we've got the latest version. Uh, we can ignore this WS. That's just the live preview coming from VS Code. Send beacon. And here was the call, actually. Because I refreshed my page, it caused the unload event to happen. Same as if I click on this link to go to the other page. There it is. I go to the other page. And here is the call to my analytics page. And the status is always going to say pending. Doesn't matter what I do because I'm not getting a response back. It's really, I'm just sending that request off to that endpoint. So here's my request headers. And down at the bottom, we can see that yes, actually I did get the payload. That data is being sent off to the server. And if we come back into VS Code, we can see in here my app page, all these requests. There it is, one, two, three, there's been three requests. If I go back again and I click the link, now we've had four requests. So the requests and the data is getting to the server. It doesn't matter that inside of here it says pending. It's pending because the browser is not getting a result. All right, so I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I'll answer as many as I can. And as always, thanks for watching.